Hello. How are you guys doing? This is very, very exciting. I'm very happy to be here. Let's see what our first slide is. First of all, I need to tell you that I am a scientist. I teach family medicine here at the College of Medicine. And after hearing that last talk, I feel very guilty because we do that. We kind of tend to grab onto our good ideas. But today's talk is about sharing what I hope you'll find as a good idea. Oh, there it is. So this is a piece of art that I made. It, it was made in Photoshop, and it represents my childhood home. As you can tell from the snow, I'm not from Florida. I put this up here because every story has to have a beginning, and since that's my childhood home, that's where I thought I would start. But it's also up here because it's about a connection that I made in conjunction with Heal, which is sitting on most of your chairs if you haven't seen it yet. And that is, a medical student taught me how to do this in Photoshop. So let's start at the beginning. That's my wedding picture. As you can tell, I used to have hair on my face. So I've gotten rid of that. That was a great day. And even though uh, it was a great day, I'm not here to talk about my wedding. I'm here to talk about the week before. Because the week before was difficult. I was a medical student. I was having final exams. And unlike medical school now, where they have met, uh, exams once a month, I had one exam for the whole course. And I had three of those exams in the week of my wedding. Three days before, I hear from my reception hall for that we didn't have enough money, that we didn't give them enough money for us to have this space. So I freak out. You know, I, I don't do a lot of wedding planning. After all, I was the groom. But I still freaked out, and I didn't know what to do because I had to come up with the money. So I called a trusted mentor of mine, Dr. Ballard. And I called him up and I was talking very, very fast and I don't know how much he understood. But he told me, he says, he'll say, how much is it? I told him. And then he said, don't worry about it. Study for your test. And that was it. The next day, I get called down to the dean's office. And in the dean's office, the dean of student affairs says, come over here. Sit, sit here. So you know it's analogous to being called to the principal's office when you're in fourth grade? Very scary. But I sit down in front of him, and he says, here. And he gives me an envelope, and inside it is enough cash to cover my financial problem. I was overwhelmed. I couldn't believe that a teacher would give me money. I couldn't believe that people cared about my future that much to invest in it. So I said, oh, thank you so much. I, I don't know what I'll do. I'll pay you back as soon as I can. And he said, stop. We don't want any money back. He said, I want you to remember to do something nice for another medical student. And that was my charge. And I did remember. We've been married for 18 years. <laughs> so fast forward a little bit. I went through medical school, graduated, did residency, and that charge kept going through my head, do something nice for another medical student. And I tried here and there. I never felt like I was successful. And then I came here, and this was the newest uh, college of medicine in, in the country, and it was an opportunity to have medical students around me all the time, and I was very excited about that. In my clinical practice, I take care of patients who don't have a lot of money, and sometimes they can't get services. I also have medical students who come with me to, the, to those uh, encounters. And one of them saw it, and he got angry. And that gave me some time to think. That charge that I was given, and that gift that I was given, I felt like it was time to give back. So I wrote down the story, and I sent it to my mentor, who loved it basically to say thank you. And then I sent it to a medical journal, and they published that story. 
And then it felt wonderful to me, and I was like, oh my goodness, this feels great. Back to our angry medical student. He looked at it, he looked at the problems that my patients were having, and he was getting angry. And I said, stop, write it down, write down their story, and we'll see what we can do with it. Well, he wrote down the story, he called it a modest proposal, and it got published. And I saw how when his story got published, what it did for him, how it changed him. And I thought, I might be on to something here. Fast forward 2008, um, Barack Obama is elected president. And a couple months later, he's awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. And lots of people th said on the radio, you know, I really think that the prize is more about what he's going to do than what he's already done. Well, that's the same way I feel about this. I was honored with the Martin Luther King Jr. Distinguished Service Award here at the, at the Florida State University, and it was an amazing day. But for me, it was an investment. It was the excuse for me to be able to do those things for those medical students that I wanted to do. To be able to give. Like I said before, medical school is still hard. Sometimes they talk about it as uh, with drinking water from a fire hydrant. I think it's more like drinking water from a fire hydrant with a straw. Because most of the time, you can't get, you only get a little bit of knowledge, but you sure do get wet. And I noticed that as students went through, it got harder and harder. And sometimes, they would get hopeless. And I thought, how can I give something to them? So, this is what happened. I met some students and I said, you know what? Maybe it's time that we started sharing our stories. And these students went to their classmates and they got together, and they formed what we call the writing group. And they called their group HEAL, standing for Humanism Evolving Through Arts and Literature. And in that group, I watched them. And I watched how as they shared their stories with each other, it changed how they felt about each other. It changed how they spoke to each other. One of the students actually drew this picture. You can't really read it on the bottom, but it says this is where death delights to serve the living. And it's about how medical students learn from people who have passed. That's actually the first piece of art that was featured in Heal. During those writing groups, I uh, got some courage. And I wrote down a poem. And it was actually a love poem for my wife, and I shared it with them, and they didn't laugh at me. And this is just a representation. It was about a flower and about painting a picture. You'll be able to see it in Heal sometime in the future. And there it is, the first volume of Heal. One of the things that it was was a huge collaboration between many medical students, staff members, faculty members, I ran into one student who was a graphic artist in a previous life. And he put together the uh, magazine on paper. This is one of his pieces. I think we call it the operating room. But in that story, the heel book was only going to get to the people who I could physically hand it to. So we, we got the stories together, we put them together, made it into a journal, and we had an opportunity to share with people. But it was limited, because we had this paper, and we had a grant for 200 copies. So 200 people will be able to see the stories. But that wasn't enough. Fortunately, some visionaries at the College of Medicine got together, and they paid for it. A thousand copies. And that first publication in 09 was a thousand copies. And I saw how touched they were about the story. 
And I thought, what is the educational value of a journal like this? And it turns out that it's all about the story. I'm a family doc. I mean, what do people do when they come to my office? They tell me their stories. You know, I have pain here. You know, my husband this, my wife that. They tell me stories. And I traffic in the stories. Because if I can't help them, I've got to tell their story to somebody else. And then, when that somebody else, that specialist, does something, they tell the story back to me. I noticed that when all the stories were put together in the journal, that the students and the people who read the journal would honor the story. And when you honor the story, you honor the person that wrote it. And I thought, my goodness, wouldn't it be great if we could use this to teach the students to honor the patients? This is one of the first art pieces that was uh, submitted to the journal, also submitted by a patient. In the heel journals, you can't really tell who's who. They're all equal. And it's all about making the patient the provider equal to each other so that there's no distance. This is the journal that we have sitting on your chairs. This is the 2011 one. It's the very latest. Like I said before, we started out with 200, then it went to 1,000. Now we're able to get 2,000 copies. Still, it's not enough. My dream would be that this work would be on every doctor's waiting room table. But my guess is that a lot more than 2,000 of those tables in our city. During all this time, as we're learning, as I was working on Heal, I went to a conference. And in that conference, someone said, you know, our profession is sick. We don't know why it is, but people are leaving medicine like crazy. And you, new faculty members, it's your job to heal the profession. Now, there's lots of people who will tell you people are leaving medicine because of Obamacare or because of insurance companies. I'm telling you right now, none of that matters. The reason they leave is because the distance between us and our patients is growing. And we didn't come to to become doctors so that we could be far away from our patients. We became doctors so we could be close. And then it came to me, what if this project could get to everybody? And so my goal for the future is to see how it is that we can make this into a global phenomenon. Fortunately, we have 2,000 hard copies and just Today, we went live in an online, open format journal. So now everybody who wants to can get a hold of this information for free. And now what started out as just putting something on tables in waiting rooms has grown to be something amazing. And it has the potential for changing people's hearts. When it's all over, I want to be able to be the person who said, you honor the story and you honor the patient. So I'll end with this. What's your story? At the end of the day, all of us have them. And some of us might think that our stories aren't that interesting. Because, you know, maybe we haven't had hardships or sacrifices or all that. But I'll tell you right now, the only thing that's interesting about your story is that it's about you. And I can't wait to hear it. Thank you.